All right, welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad here from Moss Pawn and Gun. Today we have another gun gripe episode for you. Now, this is one that we've been talking about for a couple of days. More like griping about for a I couple of days. I would say griping about it. And uh, uh, a term was brought to my attention the other day that I didn't know about, and it's called FUDs. Do you guys know what a FUD is? Okay, a FUD is like a NRA member, okay, it can be an NRA member, it can be a sportsman, it can really be anybody that is a, a gun person, but the difference between an average Second Amendment supporter and a FUD is that a FUD only cares about hunting rifles and nothing more. So they might be the kind of person that, oh, don't take my double barrel shotgun, don't take my five shot bolt mm -hmm. action rifle. Don't take, don't, my, don't take my deer rifle, don't take my duck gun, Yeah, but Everything else, screw uh, it. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really care about all that other stuff. Who cares? That, the assault rifles, yeah, I don't. We don't need those. Right. All I need is just this. Just don't mess with my stuff. They're, they're the kind of people that'll only go to bat on issues that involve sportsmanship and involve hunting and involve you know those types of conservation efforts. But anything else, be it a black rifle or any, anything that's a not a sporting type gun that or that is built specifically for sporting purposes, they could give two craps less if you ban it or not. And I found that. The NRA has actually had a huge problem with FUDs, you know, with the kind of guys that a lot of their constituents and a lot of their supporters. Now, granted, the NRA has been known to go to bat on some pretty rough issues for the gun community. And yes, I do have an NRA membership. And well, yes, I support the NRA. Of course, I mean, you have to. I mean, they're the biggest right. gun lobby group out there. They I mean, are. stupid not to support but the But a lot of their members are FUDs. Well, of course. And I, I, I have never seen the NRA openly support black rifles. Well, they're... The not in the sense of Wayne LaPierre holding up a scar heavy, you know, in a, in a big meeting, a big get-together, big media press thing. And, you know, I've never seen Wayne LaPierre hold up a freaking scar heavy. I'll believe it when I see that, you know. But, but anyways, I mean, the, the NRA has been working to, you know, kind of changed their image as of late within the past couple of years you know they brought on a lot of correspondence and they brought on a lot of a lot of young you know kind of hip people or whatever that are into into guns into the second amendment and you know more into like the black rifles and whatnot that are very prevalent nowadays with you know younger generation millennials sure. such as that some of the new firearms owners that are coming into the industry i mean they're trying to gear you know the the nra's traditional values and such to this younger generation, and they're having a very difficult time, you know, doing that. Right. I mean, well, they, they really are. Well, a lot of it is because the youngsters, you know, they 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 portray the NRA, or at least in their mind, they think the NRA is a bunch of fuds, <laughs> a bunch of old men, a bunch of old guys <laughs> hanging out with double barrel shotguns, shooting at crap in the air, and nothing more. You know, when you see somebody from the NRA that supports black guns, it does make you think a little bit that they're maybe trying a little bit too hard. Um, when it's very hard to just completely rebrand the whole idea of how you're trying to move forward as, as an organization and as a gun lobbying group. And uh, I'm not saying they're doing it wrong or anything like that, but it does seem a little Johnny come lately when, you know, we, we've had black rifles around for a long time. I mean, mm -hmm. look at all the stuff that went down with the Clinton ban oh, yeah. and, and how all of that has been portrayed. Now, the NRAs went to bat on, on a lot of important issues and, and they are an extremely important um, lobbying group, you know, here in the U.S. and it's very important you know, to support their efforts just because they are such a large group of people. But um, it, it would be a little bit more refreshing to see more support of black rifles um, from the large groups like them. Well, not only just support of the guns themselves, but the, the ideal of the gun, you know, the ideal of the Second Amendment, not in, in, the, in the light of like a sportsman's ideal, but is in a free man's or a free woman's well, ideal. The Second you know? Amendment is not about sporting use. No. It's about defense from a tyrannical government and any, anything else that falls under that. Pretty so much. If I want to use it to hunt game in, between, in the meantime, that's fine, Well, but that's not what it's the, for. The Second <laughs> Amendment is about you know, creating an equal playing ground between you know, the, the citizens you know, of this country and the government, and that's all that it is meant for, and that's what the that's what the founding fathers saw, you know, yep. and they <laughs> and they, they deemed designed it important it. enough. They to make designed it, the it that way, right? They designed it that way. Well, the the big issue too is that with with fuds, okay, and and I'm not I'm not trying to tell anybody how to raise their kids or, or what's right or wrong because that that's up to each individual to know what's right for their children and everything like that. But I think that a a, a child that's raised by a fud. It also is only getting half the story, pretty because much. you know if if your dad if if your dad's a fud and he always says, oh yeah, just get you you know a three shot 
um, you know, Winchester, whatever, or, or you know, get some hunting rifle or hunting shotgun, and, and that's all you'll ever need. You know, if, you, if your dad is a FUD and he never goes, this is an AR-15, this is an AK-47, this, you know, you may not go out and go hunting with this, but hey, it's cool. It's your right, child. You know, mm -hmm. this is what you need to know. This stuff is available. Hey, check out this handgun that you can put a suppressor on. Y you know, the FUDs don't teach their kids that kind of stuff. They just go, oh, well, you don't need that. That's well, all. And, that's, know, they leave. And, and that kid is only getting half the Second Amendment. Well, not only that, but they're also creating a, a huge problem because the thing with FUDs is as long as, you know, you don't mess with their guns, they're okay with that. But see, you give a tyrannical government an inch, they're going to take a mile. I mean, yeah. there's no doubt about that. If they start banning, say they start banning AR-15s, AK-47s, assault-style weapons, if you will, whatever the case may be, we like to call them modern sporting rifles. But the me major media outlets out there, they are still assault rifles, which is right. an incorrect term. So, but anyways, I digress. If if they take away those guns, it's only a matter of time before they're going to take away like the Remington 1100s, okay? And then they're going to take away the uh, the Remington like 742s, the 7400s because they're semi-automatic. And then they're going to take away your Remington 700 or your 770 or yeah. your Ruger American. And then they're just going to keep on going down the line and seeing what else they can pick at and take away. You're going to give them an inch works. and they're going to take a mile. That's exactly and, how it and works. And that's the problem with, with FUDs is that they, they don't look at it like that. They go, oh, well, they're never, they're never going to take my double barrel over and under shotgun. Who, who oh, well, would need that? Oh well, Uncle no one Joe, robs liquor stores with double barrel shotguns, Uncle, do they? Uncle Joe would. That's all you ever need is a double barrel shotgun, boy. Yeah, yeah Uncle Joe. You now. know, and, and here's another another side of the equation. All right, you've got fuds, which, you know, a fud is not an anti-gun person. No, a fud not at all. is a gun person. They they might come from a family who does upland duck hunting, or they do deer hunting, and they shoot mule deer, they shoot elk. They're hunters. They're outdoorsmen, and we're not certainly not saying that those folks are not supporters of the Second Amendment. But there also is a double-ended sword where they also hurt it at the same time. They're, they're chipping at the same block from two different angles. And it's dangerous because, you know, on one end is the anti-gun and one end is, is the pro-gun. Mm. But when you're a FUD, you're, you're really, you're helping and hurting. And you're that's almost important. like a You're almost like a gun moderate. Very much like, you know, the, the, the political field where you have conservatives, liberals, and then you have moderates that kind of bridge between the two. A gun moderate is a dangerous type of person because, you know, that would be considered a FUD and you, you don't wholly support the Second Amendment because that's the only topic, you know, that, that we're, we're discussing here. You don't wholly support it, so what you do is you let the government come in and chip away at the rights of others that may not impact you, but if you give the government an inch, they're going to take a mile, so if they start with modern sporting rifles, you know, semi-automatic, standard capacity guns like ARs, AK-47, such as that, like Sega 12s, Vepers, anything along which those lines. Which is already happening. Which is already happening by executive action, thank you very much. But if you start letting them chip away at those those rights of people that, you know, you, you may not really have any association with, with them or, or that type of person, you know, like the competitive shooter or just the person you know, maybe who, who's a prepper or whatever, he's got kind of a prepping mindset, he wants to have the same weapons that the, the military and the police use just in case he's got to pick up ammo in some kind of crazy situation. But you have all manner of people that use those type of guns on a daily basis. So they take away those. Well, what's to say they're not going to start taking away your Remington 1100s, your 1187s? Well, they're semi-automatic. They hold a lot of shells. Well, those things, those things are powerful. I mean, you can really hurt somebody with those. How about Remington, you know, uh, 7400s, 742s, little, you know, four-shot semi-automatic 30-06 rifles? I mean, those things are a hell of a lot more powerful than a 223 or a little 556 five, gun. But oh, oh, wait a minute. Well, those are dangerous too. Those are semi-automatic. You can fire more than one shot, you know, in, in a few seconds. Oh no, we can't have that. We're going to take those away too. But you know, then the fuds are going to be affected. So only when they are affected are they really going to start to fight. By by that time, it'll be too damn late. Right, right. You know, and that's. Well, mm. it, it can really go a lot of different directions on that. Uh, uh, you know, to support what Chad's saying, of course, you know, he, he's certainly right in that regard. But we also have a lot of new gun owners that are kind of Johnny come lately to the gun industry. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, okay? You've got a lot of people that got a big wake up call because of Sandy Hook. All right, oh, yeah. they saw these things going on and they're like, oh my gosh. You know, they're, they're going to ban semi-automatics, they're going to ban AR-15s, they're going to ban all this stuff. And they started going out and buying all these guns because they were afraid that they were going to be taken away. Now, 
in the big scheme of things, I don't know whether to call that good or bad. For one thing, I guess it's good if someone gets w woken up and they realize, holy crap, I need to get off my butt and do something. But it's also kind of bad. It's like, well, where were you? Yep. Where, where were you? What you know? Where were you on the boat 15 years well, ago? Well, yeah. And why did it take a situation like what happened at Sandy Hook to to bring that that feeling out? You know, I mean, right. It, it should. Everybody just, come. Everybody becomes patriotic when they talk about taking it away. Well, pretty much. You know? or, or in the event of some kind of national disaster, wherever the case may be. But yeah, it's eh. a slippery slope, guys. It really is. And and this video is something we thought about really hard as to how we wanted to approach it because there are a lot of people that watch our videos that are probably in the FUD category to some degree. Now, we're not saying it's a negative thing, guys. I mean, being a FUD is something that we can cure. Mm -hmm. All right, we can get you, we can get you in <laughs> some fun guns that will turn you very quick. If you're a gun person that's into hunting and you get on a, a M107 Barrett, or you get on a Ma Deuce, or you get on some cool guns, you're, you're going to come to the dark side, the black side, the evil black side. <laughs> but don't worry, you know, it, it's okay. There is a cure, guys. It's called a gun prescription with 30 round magazines and some 75 round drums, and that'll brighten your day. So uh, don't worry, there is a cure. Uh, if you guys know someone that's you know, fits the description of someone that we've talked to. Say you got a gun-toting buddy that's, that's a FUD, okay, for whatever uh, reason. Invite him and his son and him and his kids out to come shoot with you and take him out there and show him some tactical guns, show him some ARs, show him some AKs, show him that they're just cool, they're cool to play with, they're great for defense, good for defending the home, and they're just all out fun. I mean, well, it, it doesn't have to be for any other reason, just because it's fun. Well, Why not just go out and have a, have a fun time? And remember, too, that there are a lot of calibers out there for ARs and some that are very suitable for hunting purposes. And a lot of people use them for hunting. Nowadays. Exactly. Take your, you know, a magazine of appropriate uh, capacity to use for hunting purposes. Go out and use a, a 308 AR to take down deer. Mm -hmm. Tr uh, throw on your, your long range. You know, a uh, bull barrel, mm -hmm. thousand yard barrel, or a thousand yard upper to go, you know, have fun at a thousand yards. Take yep. your gun out to a thousand, play with it. So um, remember, it doesn't have to be hunting or, or sporting purposes. I mean, the Second Amendment encompasses a wide variety of, of different, th you know, things that benefit you as an American. And, and, you know, your Second Amendment is about defense, it's about defending yourself. Well, as it was said before, I don't remember the exact uh, person, but. You know, if you own a gun, you're a citizen. If you don't own a gun, then you're a subject. Yeah, it's very true. It's very true. Well, guys, we're going to wrap this video up. Uh, we want to know your, your comments, suggestions, opinions. Do you have an idea for a gun gripe? Do you agree with us? Do you disagree with us? All of the above are fine, but if you, if you want to say something, leave it in the comment section below. We'll read uh, your comments. We'll try to respond to as many of them as we can. Uh, we do appreciate the support. Uh, guys, we have a lot more videos in the pipeline. Uh, please subscribe, stay tuned, make sure you're following us, and we'll catch you next time. Take it easy.